In this WrestleTalk news, Goldberg is set to return for Elimination Chamber. WWE morale is at an all-time low. AEW draw its lowest viewership on TBS and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news. Support WrestleTalk! The Men's Royal Rumble was seen to be a massive disappointment by many that watched it. There was little action, there were only a handful of surprises which fans really enjoy, and there was an inevitable winner with no one else having zero credibility to look like they could have won instead. Apart from Shane McMahon of course, who really should have had that WWE Championship feud with Bobby Lashley. He is the best in the world after all. Too soon? Brian Alvarez noted on Wrestling Observer Live that it wasn't just us fans who thought it was a dud, as WWE were well aware the Men's Rumble was boring. <laughs> but it would appear that the Men's Rumble was tedious because WWE had to save all of their big surprises and returns for the Saudi Arabia show in a few weeks' time. Quizzlemania champion Sean Ross Sapp is reporting via Fightful Select that Goldberg is set to return to WWE imminently, and the working plan is for him to be at Elimination Chamber. While plans are always set to change, Fightful note that the current plan is for Goldberg to, once again, walk into a championship match and have his Roman Reigns WrestleMania fight that was cancelled two years ago because of the pandemic. Which means that, if this report is true, Goldberg could be on tonight's episode of SmackDown to set that match up. Fightful add though that with so much in WWE creative changing at the moment, the match is hardly a given. What's also interesting in all of this is that Goldberg told Sports Illustrated last year that although he is signed with WWE until 2023, he only has one more match on his deal. If this match in Saudi Arabia in three weeks does happen, that will be the last match on his contract and he would be free to work elsewhere. Sean Rossap adds that those he spoke to believe his deal is up after his upcoming match. Goldberg to AW confirmed. What do you make of Goldberg's return? Are you excited? Are you thrilled? He's having another title match for no reason other than he's Goldberg and he just asked for one. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you thought having two morally questionable shows in Saudi Arabia a year was a tough pill to swallow, hold on to your butts, kids. As Nick Khan said on yesterday's WWE Investors Call, why just limit it to two? For the record, this is how I imagine WWE business suits look like when they're on those investors' calls. Because everyone, WWE just made all the money. But before we get into that, here's a word from Ollie Davis and today's sponsor. Before we get on with the rest of the video, I'd just like to say a big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, which you can get 83% off and three months free if you go to surfshark.deals forward slash WrestleTalk and use the code WrestleTalk. Surfshark VPN lets you trick your device into thinking it's in another country, which opens up a whole new world of content libraries. If you're in the UK, you can watch US Netflix, which has a far bigger selection of movies. If you're outside the UK, you can watch the BBC iPlayer. And if you're in the US, you can finally get access back to the old WWE Network with its far superior functionality. I hate change. We've all been using Surfshark here at WrestleTalk for years now. It's our official VPN. And it doesn't just let us gain access to all the wrestling. It also secures our networks by encrypting internet traffic, keeping our location and download history private. My collection of ultra swan Pokemon must be protected at all costs. And my favorite feature for this is that Surfshark knows when my phone leaves a trusted connection like my home or work internet, and it immediately turns on to prevent interference. It's like having a babyface wrestling faction for your phone. So sign up to Surfshark today by clicking our link in the video description below, surfshark.deals forward slash WrestleTalk, where you'll get 83% off and three months free if you use the code WrestleTalk. We'd really appreciate if you at least check them out as they're a great company and we love working with them. Support WrestleTalk and support your internet privacy with Surfshark. The quarterly WWE investors called, which are actually more consistent than the quarterly brand invitational, is always an interesting time for certain wrestling fans. Not everyone, of course, but certainly me and Ollie Davis, because we like business. And you will love business. It is the American way. The most recent call took place yesterday and had some relatively interesting notes, the biggest of which is that WWE earned 
and I'm not kidding here, over $1 billion in revenue. This is the first time in company history they've achieved that. This is mostly down to those big deals in Saudi, but also the rights fees for television and their deal with NBC Universal to air the WWE Network on Peacock. $1 billion used to be a goal for WWE in terms of growth, but financial experts think this could end up being the baseline for the company moving forward. WWE just made all the money. But I know what you're thinking. Can WWE still get these good deals from USA, NBC, and Fox when their current deals are up, when their viewership is declining? And the answer to that question is, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Raw is down, drawing an average of 1.6 million viewers for the year, which is down from the 1.7 million average in 2020. However, USA Network is also down year on year at 18%. The top 25 cable networks, in fact, have also seen a 22% decrease. So Raw only losing 100,000 viewers year on year is a big win. SmackDown, though, is a different story, as while their year on year viewership is down 8% from 2020, falling under the 2 million average, Fox broadcasts are up 10% year on year. One would imagine though that SmackDown having Goldberg for the next few weeks to feud with Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar going for the Blue Universal Championship leading into WrestleMania, and Ronda Rousey returning to the company to feud with Charlotte Flair over the SmackDown Women's Championship should increase the average viewership for 2022 when it comes time for next year's investors call. That was really the only negative, and it was not even that big of a negative. Money is way up, live events are back, which means more money, merchandise sales are up, which also means more money. And Nick Khan noted that WWE's premium live events in 2021 were watched more on Peacock than in 2019 when it was on the network. Money in the Bank was up 25%, SummerSlam up 30%, Crown Jewel up 75%. This year's Royal Rumble was up 45% compared to the 2020 show, the last Rumble to have a live attendance, which would be good news if the Rumble wasn't so terribly boring. And Fightful Select are reporting that the poor performance of the Rumble, in terms of fan feedback at the very least, has led to an all-time low morale in the locker room. Not just from those who are stuck in catering week after week not being featured on TV, but also consistent main eventers, new names, and veterans. Sean Rossap adds that the Rumble was a major point of frustration for talent, with the constant changes throughout the day, how the match was produced, cough Shane McMahon cough, and how there were no big moments in the match or angles being built out of it. According to Fightful, a talent who has been with the company for a long time said that, outside of maybe four people, nothing matters in WWE. Another talent they spoke with have said they've never felt less heard by Vince McMahon, and conversations with him go ignored, met with haste, or sometimes seemingly spitefully go the other way based on their recommendations. Apparently there have been several instances where a talent has suggested something for their character or story, and WWE have made the decision to go 180 in the opposite direction. One wrestler said, if you see a complaint with merit and in good faith about something that lacks sense, logic, or continuity, I almost guarantee we have complained too, it just never changes anything. The overall belief with those that Sean Ross Sapp spoke to is that WWE are gearing up for a sale because that's the only way they can possibly rationalize some of the decision making. But I honestly can't see why talent are so upset. WWE just made all the money. And one of the most respected and admired stars in the locker room is not being released even though he asked to be. Oh. Thank you for your support on Patreon, Mad Mac the Meat Father and the $100 Man CD Horver. Get your own WrestleTalk news shout out by going to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk. Mustafa Ali asked for his release from WWE publicly on January 16th, and though reports at the time said he likely would be granted his release because WWE have released so many people over the last two years due to budget cuts, Ali's request was denied because Vince McMahon sees value in him. So much value that there are no current creative plans for Mustafa Ali. According to Fightful Select, Ali still hasn't been back to TV since October last year, and there is little correspondence, if any, between the two sides. And while plans could change, pal, there are no working plans in creative for Mustafa Ali. Oh. To the point where, 
According to Fightful, a WWE talent pitched the idea of Ali being in the Rumble so they could be eliminated by him and asked if Ali would be interested in the spot. Based on Ali's tweet of, no, I would not like to be in the Rumble, I would like my release, one would assume he wasn't that interested. To make matters worse for Ali, Feifel added that he has got well over a year left on his contract, which would mean it would be mid to late 2023 before he can officially leave WWE if they don't release him before that. The hashtag Free Ali has seen some growth since Ali requested his release, with Amanda Huber, the widow of AEW's Brody Lee, saying recently that she knew what it was like to see someone ask for their release and be stuck, a reference to her husband asking for his WWE release in April, but had his contract extended due to injury and had to wait nearly a full year before he was actually released. It was a tweet that was liked by WWE's own Sasha Banks. It was bad news news for AEW2, as this Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, which featured the first time ever clash between MJF and CM Punk, drew the lowest rating since the move to TBS and the lowest rating for Dynamite since December 15th of 954,000 viewers. It must be a crushing blow to the company, as the Punk-MJF match has been built for months and was seen as one of if not the hottest feuds in the company. Worse still, the all-important 18-49 demo was a 0.35, which is down nearly 15% from last week. Dynamite still finished third in the night, beaten by an NBA game and the season premiere of South Park. Is that still on? But the viewership in every age group, except females 12 to 34, was down. The biggest drop being in males 12 to 34, which is traditionally one of AEW's strongest demos. And as pointed out by Dave Meltzer on Twitter, this ends a six week streak of AEW beating Raw in the 18 to 49 demo, with Raw doing 384,000 compared to Dynamite's 310. Plus, WWE just made all the money. So they're the real winners here. Coming up on today's show, we'll be talking about the Ben Affleck Batman solo movie that could still be happening. We'll be walking you through this week's big releases, including Moonfall and Jackass Forever. And speaking of the Batman, we will tell you when you can book your tickets.